Hey there, gang. Welcome back to the big board. Or the small board, or the in-between in size board, whatever size board you happen to be playing with. And I just found out where the strategy markers go. Excellent. There's a lot going on on these maps. This is the uh, trade, uh, well, it's a Trajan expansion, but it's the Ancient Wars, Wars series from Decision Games. This is the Exp Excalibur expansion, plus uh, two or three magazine editions from SMT. Uh, the Roman Civil War, I think it's called, and Caesar in Gallia and Germania and something else. So, um, and Trajan. And so you can combine all these and make up a big scenario. And so, of course, you know, I read the rules three or four months ago. I thought, ah, this looks like it'll be fun. Let's do it. And, of course, I didn't just want to, you know, goof around with the game. So let's, let's get on it, right? And let's play a real scenario. And I've always had a little bit of a fascination with Marcus Aurelius, uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, allegedly... Uh, top five emperors of the Roman Empire and of course a somewhat of a philosopher emperor in a, himself a very interesting man to read about so I found a scenario that deals with his particular reign and some of the, his, his activities uh, of course he was in charge during the uh, the challenges with uh, the Parthians and uh, the issues they had with Germania. And of course, then there was the massive um, plague or whatever it was that went through the Roman, uh, the Roman Empire as well. So really kind of caught, a, caught them at a very delicate time. And it was an interesting set of dynamics that he had to deal with. And so I thought that might be an interesting scenario to play out probably very complex. So my intention is to grab a very small portion of the map, and I'll show you the rest of the map in a second and explain why there's a bunch of blocks on it and don't freak out or you little hex encounter ninnies. <coughs> I've got it all under control here. Uh, we're going to have a look at the map and then we'll kind of have a little bit of a discussion about what the victory conditions are. And then at some point, I'm going to play a, a very small portion of the map, maybe up here somewhere, and play a turn, half a turn, or at least just get into the operations phase and we'll see what happens. And then that'll allow me to then to decide whether or not we're going to actually you know, go through this exercise and uh, run through the, uh, through the campaign. It runs from uh, April 166 AD through September 179 AD, so it's it's a good, th uh, you know, that's 12 years, almost. That's a honk, that's a whack of time. So we'll see what happens, right? Okay, so let's have a look at what, what's going on in the map. At this point in the Roman Empire, pretty much all of uh, Greater Europe and the Middle East was under their sway, and uh, they had converted most of the cities to Roman cities, and or Roman possessions, right? And they'd adopted the Roman Moors and were part of the empire per se. And that uh, makes it pretty interesting when you're setting up because the, the setup instructions are defined by regions. So you've got Hispania, which is obviously Spain, and uh, you've got Britannia over there, Britain, and you've got the Gallic area, then you've got the Rhine frontier, which is this little section that runs down here, and then the Danube frontier, and then you've got uh, this area that can never be uh, managed or controlled uh, for various reasons. And then you have Macedonia, um, Asia Minor, and then the most uh, involved area is, of course, the freaking Middle East. What a surprise, right? So, <clears throat> at, you know, early in the war, uh, in the war, early in the empire, uh, Cilicia and Syria and Mesopotamia were all discreet, and Judea is down here a little ways. But over time, it all became known as the East. And so, 
I think I've got the zones correct for 166 AD. And basically, this is the east. Uh, the rules do, the scenario instructions kind of contradict themselves. It says that at this point in time here, that um, these three, this section here, sorry, I just had to pause the video for a second. Uh, this section here is deemed to be part of the Roman Empire and thus they are red cities. But then in the Parthian setup, it says that the Arabian area here, these, uh, and it calls out these three cities, receive uh, civis units or, or you know, civil garrisons, right? It's a little confusion there. Let's make it hard for the Roman, Romans rather than easier. So we'll make that, uh, make that a Roman, uh, a non-Roman possession. And I do believe, I'm trying to think the order of the emperors. I know that uh, Hadrian had withdrawn from this area, but I don't recall whether that was, uh, Marcus Aurelius had, was, they were still trying to expand uh, at that time. So maybe this was captured and then given back. Uh, I'm not sure. So anyway, uh, that, that's the story. Now, what are the victory conditions for the scenario? Pretty straightforward, really. Capture five uh, Parthian cities for the Romans. And, you know, pretty straightforward. Make those three towns that are circled those settlements there, convert them into uh, uh, colonies, Roman colonies. That sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Look, there's a measly four units uh, defending against the might of the Roman Empire. Well, we have massive recruiting pools, of course, and the Germans were actually pretty interested in migrating at this time. They were uh, I think well aware that there were challenges for the uh, for the Romans at this particular point in time, and uh, that was part of the part of one of the challenges that Marcus Aurelius faced. Uh, this mass migration really caused a bit of a problem in 166. So I'll be interested to see how the the game pl uh, models that. Uh, I, I assume it'll be part of our recruiting exercise that we'll get to you know, do some different things in the first turn or whatever the case may be. Ooh, excuse me. So, from I, I'm not going to really talk about strategy or anything like that because I need to go back and revisit the rules and uh, reconfirm. I've got to put these two uh, these two units have got to go somewhere as well. And I'm, I'm one, I have one legate left that I don't know where to put. So maybe he goes into the recruiting pool, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's the scenario, that's the situation. Uh, it's going to be very fluid and dynamic. You can see the map, the maps are different, slightly different shades and they also don't tie in uh, perfectly either. And I'm not sure what the rationale behind that was. I can't imagine it'd be that hard, but over over time, the the distance becomes almost a full hex of offset here, where that that's incorrect. There's actually a city here, and we're just going to call it in that hex uh, right near Byzantium. And uh, part of the the neatness of this game is the fact that it, the maps are built off of the old geography so the distances are relative to what the Romans and the Parthians and the Ger Germanians and all the rest of it thought the various tribes of Germania thought uh, they were right you can see how small Italy is relative to the rest of uh, the world whereas you know Greece is quite large here uh, you've got a, a some differences in look how small the sea is here, right? So it's all uh, kind of it's kind of uh, somewhat askew. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so that's that's going to be this little deal. Um, you won't see this video for a while, obviously enough. I'm hoping that I'll get through it all and and uh, finish it in in its entirety before I uh, actually start posting about it. I uh, just kind of want to play with this for a while and not have to deal with the pressure of uh, trying to get 
get things done to satisfy my uh, desire to post one of my progress. So we're just going to kind of keep at it. Uh, I will say that the uh, counters are extraordinarily thin. They're almost too difficult. To, I can't pick them up with tong uh, with tongs <laughs> with uh, these things. Um, my tweezers and the counters are. I mean, they're just super super thin. Those suckers are thin, plus they've all got freaking side nibs as well, so it's like a double whammy. Not only are they thin, but they have side nibs. Regardless, I'm still clipping that bad boy. All right, there we go. Talk to you guys soon. Later.